QuickBooks Online 2022. Purchase of inventory using bank feeds, periodic method, and cash method. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30-day free trial. Holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. the business view as compared to the accounting view if you wanted to change to the accounting view it's something you can do by going to the cog up top switch to accounting view down below we will be toggling back and forth between the two views either here or by jumping to the sample company file currently in the accounting view back on over to the bank fee practice file opening up a few tabs to put reports in by right clicking on the tab up top duplicating it Back to the tab to the left, right clicking again and duplicating again. As those are thinking, let's see where the reports are located in the sample company, which is in the accounting view. On the left hand side, there are on the reports. That's them. Back on over to the business view in the second tab. The reports are in the business overview section over here. And then in the reports, Closing the hamburger, opening up the balance sheet, the big balance sheet as our first report, and changing that range 010121 to 123121, and then run in it. Tab to the right, going into the business overview again in the reports, closing the hamburger, going down to the Profit and loss, the PNL, the income statement, range change up top from 010121 to 123121 and running it. So I'm going to go back to the first tab and we talked last time about the adding of the inventory and we had the three methods that we can take a look at. We could, we could basically, and when you think about inventory in QuickBooks, if you look up inventory, they're going to give you the information that's related to kind of the most complex or detailed uh, process within the QuickBooks set system. That's the perpetual inventory system in which you're tracking inventory units in terms of cost of the inventory and units of the inventory in the QuickBooks system. However, it's possible to have inventory and run it either outside the system. So that's the first thing you want to think about. In other words, one, is there some way I can stay on a cash basis system and still be doing the inventory, which from just an accounting standpoint would be the easiest thing to do, but not possible if you have significant amounts of inventory? Or two, do I want to have a periodic inventory system tracking the units of the inventory outside of the system and then making periodic adjustments like daily adjustments, weekly adjustments, monthly adjustments into the system to adjust the inventory to the physical count that or three do i want to use the full service inventory system that usually is the thing you'd be looking up which is a perpetual inventory system within quickbooks quickbooks allowing me to track the inventory in the system let's keep with our practice here of thinking about the easiest version or the most cash basis version or the version on which we can be completely dependent on the bank feeds as much as possible first and then deviate from that as we add levels of complexity and, and make a more accrual uh, based type of system. So first, let's say, let's say, well, what if I want to try to try to just be dependent on the bank feeds and I have inventory, but I don't have a lot of inventory possibly. Possibly I just do uh, a little bit of inventory and it's it's on like I like I have a just in time system. So I buy the inventory and then I sell it really quickly or possibly in a custom type of system. Someone actually orders something, then I buy the inventory and then I sell it to them pretty quickly on the turnaround. It's possible maybe then I can be on a cash basis system and be reliant on the bank feeds in essence. So when I purchase the inventory, I can wait till it clears the bank and actually record the purchase of the inventory, increasing inventory as opposed to an expense account at that time. And then when I make the sale, maybe i can even wait till that clears the bank and when they have the deposit i record the deposit and the other side goes to sales and i don't have to worry about tracking the inventory and that means i don't have to worry about items which allows me possibly not to need the inventory forms which track things by item which is the sales receipt and the uh, create invoice so that's method number one let's take a look at it 
So let's go back on over and say, okay, let's go into our bank feeds, which are over here. Go into the first tab, hold control. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to find our bank feeds, which under this system is going to be in our bookkeeping area and then in the transactions and then banking. But because I'm going to need to add an account, most likely I like to switch to the accounting view. So I'm going to do that by going to the cog drop down switching to the accounting view because I don't like the adding of the accounts as they're currently done in the business view that might change. QuickBooks might realize that I'm right and they should fix it and make it better. And then the other view would work fine. But here it's in the banking area on the left hand side and then the banking up tap. So we're in bank feed, what I call bank feed limbo now, where the transactions are in the system, but they have not been included to the you know, processed over to the promised land of being used in the financial statement creation. They need a little help. They need a little guidance. So I'm going to pretend here that this is going to be an item for an inventory item. It's another, it's a Primerica item here. So we're going to assume that that's our purchasing of inventory. That's who we purchase our inventory from. So I'm going to select the drop down. And do we have one for that yet? I don't think so. Let's, let's add this Primerica. So I'll add that here. And so there it is. And I'm going to say add it. So we will add it. I'm not going to add any details. I'm just going to save it as is. And then the account, which is the category or account that we want to assign to. Here's the key. Uh, do we want to be putting it into inventory? That's what we would normally be doing because we purchased inventory and then we wouldn't record it as an expense in the form of cost of goods sold till we sell it. But if it's possible, I'd like to just record it directly into cost of goods sold because that means I'll be basically on a cash basis system. So you, if and it's a little confusing because someone might say, well, do you sell inventory? We're going to say, yeah, we sell inventory, but we don't ever actually have an inventory account. Why? Because we expensed it <laughs> at the point in time that we purchased the inventory because our turnaround time is quite quick. And so we're just trying to expense it. We're trying to stay in a cash basis system. Again, talk to your accountant to see whether or not that would be a possible scenario for you. But we're going to try it here. Cost of goods sold cost of goods sold i'm going to add that account and and i'm adding this account because i deleted all the accounts that they gave us and i'm just building our books as we go it's not going to be a bank type of account it's going to be an expense but a special expense type of account called cost of goods that are sold and then a uh, labor they got equipment other let's just put it into other the second category doesn't matter all that much and then i'm going to put it into cost of goods sold no sub account or anything like that there it is there it is tabbing through this that looks good now obviously if this was a standard thing we buy all of our inventory from primerica we can then make a rule for it but i'm not going to do it here in our practice problem because we're just practicing so then i'm going to go down and i'm going to say okay let's add that let's go ahead and add it and record it so there it is there's no rule that was applied so it just added it uh, outright so if i go to the tab then to the right and then I run it, we're gonna see in the checking account. So if I go into the checking account, we should have another expense type of form because of course there was a decrease to the cash. So I'm gonna go down and say, there it is. There's the $30. If I go into it, I see that expense type of form just like uh, we saw before. So there that is, I'm gonna close that back out and then go back on up and back to my, back to my balance sheet holding control, scrolling up a bit. And then on the other side, instead of recording the other side to inventory, which is a similar kind of concept as we did with the equipment here, because I didn't use it in the current time frame, I'm gonna use it in the future. But assuming that the turnaround that when we use it is going to be quite quick, we went directly to the expense account, basically staying on a cash basis method. So if I go to the tab to the right then, and I refresh this tab, running it there we have our cost of goods sold now the cost of goods sold looks funny right now because there's no income line item related to it how could you have a cost of goods sold before the income because we stuck to a cash basis system and when we purchased the inventory we just expensed it at that point in time assuming that we're going to turn around and sell it very quickly and therefore once that happens the two things are going to match up the revenue is going to be matching up to the cost of goods sold. That means when I record the revenue side of things, it should be quite easy for me to record. I don't have to track the inventory. I don't have to turn on inventory within the system. If I was able to do th this method, uh, I would, and I could basically rely on simply the bank feeds because I could just say, 
uh, when the revenue goes through, if I waited till it goes through, and then I record basically all deposits that are from customers as revenue in the bank feeds, then I would have an increase to the, to the checking account. And then the other side would be going here to the income. At that point in time, the income would match up to the cost of goods sold and we would be correct at that point in time. So there's a timing difference that we see here uh, from us expending the cost of goods sold before the actual sale had been made. Now on the sales side of things, which we'll talk more about the deposits later, we're talking about you know the decreases right now on the purchase side. On the sales side of things for inventory, if I go to the first tab and hit the, the um, hamburger, the two sales forms that are typically used are the invoice and the sales receipts. The reason QuickBooks wants us to use those is because those are the things that we have items. We put the items into the system and the items, if we have inventory, tell us the inventory, help us with the inventory tracking. We'll talk more about that on the revenue side of things. But so on, the, on this side, if you wanted a perpetual inventory system, you would have to use these two items. Uh, and it would be a little bit more complex because it would be tracking the inventory in the system. Here, we're basically using the bank feeds. You could, in this case, use the bank feeds just to wait till the deposits clear the bank in the bank feeds and then record the deposit and then just record it to sales. In a bank, in a deposit form, you don't have the items. So, and you don't, so you can't really track things by what you sold and you can't track the inventory. That's, that's why you could still kind of be in a, on a cash-based system by using kind of this method if you're still basically on a cash basis system. Now, the other thing that you could do, and I won't actually record this one, but you can have the same kind of process uh, and say, I'm gonna be on a periodic inventory system. So the periodic inventory system would be a similar process where you're gonna say, I'm gonna just take the decrease in the checking account when I make the purchase of uh, the inventory. But instead of recording the other side to the the cost of goods sold directly at that point in time i'm still going to record it to the inventory account an asset account of inventory at the point in time that i make the purchase but i'm not going to track it in the system in other words i'm not going to track the units within quickbooks i'm just going to put the dollar amount i'm just going to record the the bank transaction directly to the inventory account without using items in other words note that if i go to this first tab again and if I hit the plus button, uh, usually we, when we purchase the inventory, we're gonna enter like a, an expense form, a check form, or possibly a bill form if it was on an, an accrual method. And if you go into an expense form, you'll see you got your two items down below. You can put things in just by category, meaning I'm just gonna type in the inventory account here, or you can add the item. Now, when you say item, the item is usually an inventory item or a service item, but here we're buying inventory typically. And the reason the items field is different than the field up top is because the item is gonna allow you to actually track the inventory on a perpetual inventory system. So if I was using a perpetual inventory system, I would have to use this items field. But if I'm not using a perpetual inventory system, then I can just record it without the items, uh, which will be a little bit easier and just record it directly then into the inventory account. So in other words, I'll have inventory on my books here, but I will not have a sub ledger within QuickBooks breaking out what inventory units we have and the cost of those inventory units using some kind of flow assumption. QuickBooks Online typically using a first in first out flow assumption, but rather I'm gonna have my actual tracking of the inventory units and my flow assumptions outside of QuickBooks, say in Excel possibly, and then be tracking them on a perpetual inventory system. So in other words, I'm gonna count how much inventory I have. I'm gonna record the purchases of the inventory as I make them in my Excel worksheet, for example. And then at the end of the period, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, I'm gonna count how much I in inventory I still have left, ending inventory, subtract the inventory available minus the amount that I have left. And the difference is the cost of goods sold. So instead of me recording a decrease to the inventory every time I make a sale, I will then come in here periodically and make an adjusting entry, decreasing the inventory according to my worksheet periodically, and the other side then going to the cost of goods sold. So it's one more step in the process. In that process, I'll still record inventory, but I will not be tracking the inventory within QuickBooks on a perpetual inventory system. I'm not gonna record the sales 
uh, line and record the items in it. I'm just going to put the dollar amount in QuickBooks and then periodically adjust it down according to my external periodic worksheets using an adjusting entry, a non-cash entry, lowering the inventory account and recorded the other side to the cost of goods sold as they have been uh, used in order to make sales in accordance with my external periodic inventory system worksheet. That's the second method. Those are the two methods you can do that are outside or not the full service inventory method within the QuickBooks system. Then you've got the full service method, which we'll talk about next time, which is attempting to track the inventory within the QuickBooks system, which kind of makes the bank feed, uh, the bank feeds a little bit more difficult because you have that le extra level of complexity of not only recording the items, not expensing them, but putting them on the books as an asset. And you, you're going to need to track the subledger, uh, which means you're going to have to be using items. So we'll talk more about that next time.